In this video lecture, we're going to be discussing conditional probability. Now, the probability of an event can be affected when there is additional information about the experiment that is known. If that is the case, this is when the concept of conditional probability comes into place. So it is essentially used when you want to calculate the probability of some event E, given that you know that the, another event has already occurred. So if we have two events, so let E and F denote events, and let's write down probability of E with a vertical line followed by F. Then this notation denotes the probability of event E occurring given that F has occurred. Right, and our formula for this is as follows. Probability of E given F is then equal to, so if we work with a reduced sample space, then we could rewrite this as just counting the number of elements in the set E intersection F divided by the total number of members in the set F, right? So the denominator works with the event that has already occurred. Of course, since we are dividing by the total number of members um, in event F, we would require that that number in the denominator must not be zero. So as a result, we would require that set F must not be empty, because if it is empty, then the number of members in F would be zero. Now, if we are working with a sample space, then we could rewrite this as the probability of E into section F divided by the probability of F. Right, so here I've just written down the two formulae, one using a reduced sample space and the other using a general sample space. Now, of course, I've written this as probability of E given F has occurred. We can then also write down the probability of F given that E has occurred. Right, and of course, using your reduced sample space, this will be number of members in E intersection F divided by, again, focus on what has already occurred the total number of members in the set E. And again, by the same explanation, I would require that E must not be empty. And similarly here, I require that the probability of F must not be zero. Right, so that's your formula for your reduced sample space working with your general sample space. It is the probability of E intersection F divided by the probability of E, and again imposing that probability of E must not be zero. Now, looking at these two equations or formulas that I've written down, observe that both equation 1 and equation 2 both incorporate the probability of E intersection F into it. So observe that the probability of E intersection F, so if I'm just working with equation 1, Right, so probability of E intersection F is then equal to the probability of E given F has occurred times the probability of F. And if I'm working with equation 2, then probability of E intersection F equals to the probability of F given E times the probability of E. So we then have that the probability of E intersection F equals to that from equation 1 and it equals to that from equation 2. And this actually results in what we call the multiplication law. So this is our general multiplication law. So if you ever are required to find out the probability of two events occurring together, then you may end up using conditional probability to do so and you will use it by multiplying to the probability of the event that has occurred. So multiplication is being used in here. 
All right, so keep in mind these formulas. All of these formulas are required. I'm now going to go through an example. All right, so here's our example. We have a bag that consists of two blue jelly beans and two white jelly beans. All right, so they denote, since there's two blues, we denote it B subscript 1, B subscript 2. And since there's two whites, we shall denote it W subscript 1 and W subscript 2. Right. What's happening now with this bag of jelly beans? It says if two jelly beans are randomly taken without replacement, that means we're not putting it back into the bag, which means that when you're picking, there are no repeats, right? So that's what it means when they say no replacement, right? So you cannot pick the same jelly bean twice. Find the probability that the second jelly bean is white, given that the first is blue. Right, so immediately we know that we're picking twice and we know that when we are picking that order is going to matter, right? Because we are picking one jelly bean, we have to record what it is and we pick the second jelly bean and then we have to record it again. So we have to be very clear on our notation that we are using for this recording. Right, so what are we going to do? Right, so we will use ordered pairs right, to, denote, to denote each draw. Right, so we'll, our ordered pairs will be um, let's say B I W I and W I B I. So this is selected first. also selected first. So the first member in the pair denotes what was selected first and the second member in the pair means that it was selected second. So if you had a pair XY it means that X was selected first and Y was selected second. Right, so that's what it's meaning. Now why have I used subscripts in here? That's because we've got I equals to 1 and 2. Right, so I could have either picked uh, jelly bean B1 first or I could have picked B2 in my first selection. Right, so that's what it's basically meaning. But now let's also be clear about the events that can occur. Right, so we're going to let B denote that we select blue on the first draw. Right, so let B be the event. Right, it's going to denote the event that blue is selected in the first draw. And we shall let W denote the event that white, a white jelly bean, is selected in the second draw. Right, so immediately here, just by working with this, we realize that we are restricting ourselves in the sample space. So since we are working with restrictions, we could use the first part of the formula that I had wrote down. So what is the first part? So we could work with that formula. Right, so let's write down what it is that we want to calculate firstly. Find the probability that the second jelly bean taken is white, given that the first is blue. Right? So we want the probability that the second, this denotes that event that white is selected on the second row, so we want the probability W given that B has occurred, where B denotes that blue has been drawn on the first. That is precisely what we want to calculate. Based on our formula, we know this is the number of members in the set W intersection B divided by the number of members in the set B. So we now need to count or list all of the members that are in B and W intersection B. So let's firstly list everything that is in B. So what are the pairs in B? B denotes the event that blue is selected in the first draw. Now here are all of the possibilities that can occur. It must be written in ordered pairs. So how can I select blue in the first draw? Maybe I've selected jelly bean B1, right? And 
I could select it with anything else in the second drawer but remember B1 is not put back into the bag so I cannot select B1 again right so I can then select maybe jelly bean B2 in the second drawer right the next thing that could occur so let's continue with our selections of jelly bean B1 I could then have selected jelly bean W1 in the second drawer or if B1 was selected first and I could have selected jelly bean W2 white number two right so we've got our blues and the white jelly beans. So this is what could have occurred if I selected jelly bean B1 first. So now what happens if I selected jelly bean B2 first? Right, so then I could have B2, but remember I cannot select B2 again because it's not been replaced into the bag. So I can select B1, right? So since I've already taken care of that occurrence if I selected B2 first I could then select W1 and if I selected B2 first I could then select W2 and there's no other possibilities that could occur because we've already done all possibilities with jelly bean B1 first and we've already done all possibilities with jelly bean B2 first without replacement right so this is all of the occurrences in which a blue jelly bean has been selected in the first drawer. Now we want to see what is W into section B, meaning what is the total number of outcomes or the set consisting of all the outcomes when we select jelly beans that are blue first and jelly beans that are white second. So look at everything that has occurred here in the set B. Where have I selected a blue jelly bean first and a white jelly bean second? How many of those occurrences do I have? Here's one, here's another, so blue white, blue white, that's blue blue, here's blue white and here's blue white. So that means that the intersection is then equal to these four occurrences, jelly bean blue one with jelly bean white one, followed by B1 W2, followed by B2, W1, and B2, W2. So this is the intersection of white being picked second and blue being picked first. Right, so now going back to what it is that we want to compute, probability that a white jelly bean was selected after a blue jelly bean was selected is equal to number of occurrences or number of members in the set W intersection B divided by number of members in the set B. We see that the number of members in W intersection B is 4. The number of members in B is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that means that the probability of selecting a white jelly bean second after a blue jelly bean has been selected is 2 that's where I'm ending this.